There's a story behind this speaker. Um, it's somebody that I met before we founded Muslim Tech Fest, and it was actually one of the reasons why I thought this would be such a great idea and such a good way to connect lots of Muslims that are working on big, ambitious ideas together. Um, he's a two-time exited founder. Um, he's a brilliant individual and great at telling stories. We're going to invite him up to tell us a little bit about his journey and how he sees the future of tech and entrepreneurship where Muslims should get involved. Please welcome to the stage, Safa Al-Khatib. And again, let's make some noise for Safa. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Excellent to see everyone. Who woke up here today before 3 a.m.? <laughs> we have a few. Well, cut me in, cut me one of that. Uh, wasn't that amazing with Harun? By the way, sorry, Harun, but actually, Harun, I used to teach him in Sunday school. And I have to say, I didn't think you would amount to anything. So <laughs> was I right or not? Was I right, guys? I was right, wasn't I? Okay, excellent. So I was given 10 minutes to talk about entrepreneurship 101, and I'm like, that's a big subject, and I've only got 10 minutes. But what does an entrepreneur really want to do more than anything else, even if they don't admit it, is what? Have a phenomenal exit, right? So let's talk about that. Now, you all know, as entrepreneurs, you're not going to go anywhere unless you build products that customers really love and solve a true pain, for, uh, pain point for them. You're not going to grow anything, and you're not going to be successful without that. Um, and you have to be also delighting those customers when you use it. But having said that, those customers may buy your products, but they're not going to buy your business, are they? So you have to think, who would be buying your business? Well, it's either going to be a financial transaction or another company that would be um, that would be um, uh, buying that business uh, from you. So you really have to tell yourself um, each and every time as you go and you're buying, as you're building that business, who will actually buy my business and for what reason and what would do this uh, for them? So my name is uh, Safa Al Katib. I'm CEO of AutoCab. Just told you a little bit about that. We're a software business. We develop software for the taxi and private hire company. We have customers in 33. Uh, countries around the world. AutoCab was acquired by Uber Technologies uh, three years ago, and today uh, we are a wholly owned subsidiary of Uber Technologies. So, if you look at any VC pitch deck, what's at the center of that? Well, you're going to have revenue charts and EBITDA charts, right? And you would think that's actually very important, and of course it is. Of course, that is very, very important to have that and to grow that business and grow that uh, revenue top line and profitability. And when you're trying to exit to financial institutions, that, of course, is very important. But I think there's an angle that a lot of entrepreneurs miss. When you're being acquired by another business, I tell you the main reason, this is my experience, it may not be true every time, the main reason they're acquiring you isn't really for your revenue or for the EBITDA profit. Honestly, if it was for that, probably you would be trying to acquire them rather than uh, them acquiring you. Typically, typically those, uh, those companies acquire you because they're trying to solve a strategic problem that they have themselves. So large businesses have large problems, difficult problems, and they also have small problems. But because they are large, even small problems can be quite costly to solve. And so if you can put yourself in a position where you're building a business that actually solves that problem for them, be it big or being small, you have a good chance of, or at least a way better chance of getting acquired and probably acquired as a valuation that is higher than your revenue or EBITDA uh, would, would assume. So I think you know, this is the kind of stuff that if you can build a business that solves a problem for a larger one, like I've, I've done two exits, and to be honest, in both cases, they fit in that category. And I think that kind of element is typically uh, overlooked with a lot of uh, entrepreneurs. So she says, Safa, okay, so how do I apply this today? What, how do I take this lesson and apply today? And this is just an example, just to kind of go through, just to bring it to life. 
I, as a CEO, I talk to a lot of other CEOs, not necessarily just in the tech space, but other CEOs that are building all kinds, you know, working and have large businesses in many different sectors. It doesn't have to be technology. And I can tell you most of them today don't know anything to do with, they don't know what to do with AI. They don't know how to build with it. They don't know what it can and can't do. And they don't know how it will impact their business. And I can predict sitting here today that in five years we're going to have a ship shipwreck, actually. You're going to have a lot of CEOs out there having very large businesses, seeing new businesses come out uh, that challenge what they do and challenge the business model that they have built over the years. And they're going to say, whoa, how am I? I I'm a billion-dollar company. This thing can come and disrupt me and... I've got new business models coming in and new companies coming in, and I could end up being a half a billion dollar company. And what, what are they going to do at that time? What would you do if you're a CEO and you have that problem? You're going to look around for tech startups that have done, have something special that can fix that problem for you. Right? So I'm just trying to bring a real world example. And really, I think in this situation, certainly if you have experience in AI and can build these kinds of businesses, especially for a tech-oriented group like we are, I think go ahead and build those businesses, build tech businesses that ultimately, you know, normally you can see Harun, it took him 10 years to exit, well, a lot less, but normally it's a 10-year process to exit in that. I think there's opportunity in three to five years where someone will knock on your door and say that I would like to acquire your business for a bunch of money because it solves a big problem for them. So I would say go ahead and build businesses that solve customer pain points and delight customers. Yes, go ahead and do that. And yes, go ahead, build businesses that grow revenue like Harun did and, and get that profitability out there with EBITDA. But also build a business that can solve a problem for somebody big. And if you do that, you will likely see an exit come your way and a good exit at that. And when you do that, by the way, and if you really want to know, th know that you actually made it, then you will get a call from Zahed telling you to speak at the next <laughs> conference. That's how you know you did well. Okay? I think I only have 10 minutes, so I'll, that's all I want to share with you.